Welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to come out today. Uh, my name is Will Buvenick. I am the founder and CEO of Nebula Media Group. We make sure that websites are accessible so people with disabilities can access them. I'll let Saida introduce herself. Hello, everyone. My name is Saida Ian. I am an African American woman. I'm wearing a green shirt and a dark brown pink pants, and I'm also wearing boots. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Every Monaco, and I was born deaf, so my parents found out I was deaf when I was in fourth grade, and my whole life I struggled with communication, and I rely heavily on deep reading, sign language, and closed captioning to communicate with people. And a little bit about myself, I'm Will Buvenick, and I am motivated and inspired by building accessible assistive technologies. So a little bit of background about myself. I'm the youngest in my family, and all three of my older siblings have intellectual disabilities. So I er learned from a very early age that it wasn't that my siblings had trouble accessing the digital world, it was that the digital world was made inaccessible to them. When looking through different opportunities and solutions to integrate them into the workforce in all different areas of life, I stumbled across this wonderful world of digital accessibility, which we'll be demoing and showcasing a little bit today in an interactive workshop format. So, we're gonna start a little bit of Q&A. The one question that we have here is, what do you think of when you hear the world word accessibility? Don't all go at once. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Accessible ramps, rails, spaces. Yes. Yes. Good answer there. Any others? Yes. Okay. Absolutely, so we called on three different people and got three very similar but somewhat little bit different answers. So we wanna try and demonstrate some examples of accessibility in both the physical and the digital world. So what we're going to do is we're going to break out into three different breakout sessions. I know you're gonna to have to get up and get moving. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have a deaf of hard of hearing session. We're also going to have a visual representation session and we're going to have an assistive technology station as well. We're going to do it in increments of seven minutes. So we're going to rotate to each individual table. So feel free to pick one specific table and then rotate after seven minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and get started now. Uh, go ahead and we'll get set up at those three stations just in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, I'm gonna show you something and then you're gonna describe it, all right? And then they're gonna show what you're doing. Okay. So uh, they need a mark, yeah. There you go. Just take one. Just uh, so take one. Okay. Yes. So I need you to describe to me. So that's there. just how, yeah. So do you see the picture? So you're going to describe it, and so you're going to have to, don't say what the thing is. So you can, you have to do your uh, best. Or you have to do your best, you know. Oh, okay. So don't say what any of the things are. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I, I'm not going to tell you much. To your best, to your best. We're drawing. Are we drawing? Yes, she's going to say. She's going to tell you. And you're going to draw out what you hear from her. Okay. Okay. Are you guys ready? Anything else? That's it. There's a shadow on the left side of both of them. And no, never mind, that's nothing. That's <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> 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 I 
guys are done. Uh, ten seconds. The guys are done. Okay. No, ten seconds. No, then. All right. Letting them draw. <laughs> well, see, so you got it right. Is that the <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Ian. Hey, what is it? <laughs> Is that the picture of it? It's around there. It works. This one's locked down. Everything's locked down. Oh, okay. It's the other visual. Basically the same thing. Basically the same thing. This is what happens when you get a One to one. One to one match. One to one right there. And so what we're looking at here is an extended description. So this is something where you got all of that context and all of those details. But then imagine if all we had given you as the prompt was two lines. May not have given you all the necessary context that we needed. So there's a balance you have to come to between an extended image description versus proper alternative text. Alternative text only has a limit of 160 characters. So imagine trying to describe all of that in 160 characters. Oh my God. Something I think about is one of the most common accessibility errors out there. <laughs> Done. All right, so I want to hear about your takeaway from the breakout session. So what did you guys think about that? Yeah. I actually want to, I actually want to question. I know that there's the AI of describing something, and it creates a picture for you. Oh. Does that exist the other way around? Yes, yes there is AI-powered uh, alternative text writing, and it's sometimes wildly inaccurate. Sure, sure. And so until there is more sophisticated AI algorithms out there, there still needs to be human-based writers because we're speaking to humans, we're not speaking to machines. Okay. Any, so, any other takeaways? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Um, so you guys probably have like so different perspectives, you know, like when it comes to product design, you know, accessibility design and these things. Um, so I'm just gonna give you guys just a, just a little bit introduction. So accessibility design and inclusion design. So when you're talking about inclusion, so a lot of companies they promote that like, um, we're all about inclusion or a company, but if you're talking about inclusion, you have to include accessibility. So a lot of time, you know, when I go somewhere and they're like, oh, so we're all about like, we're being inclusive, we're inviting a lot of black founder, we're inviting in them. And I will attend to this event and I'm like, where's the interpreter? Like, you can't just pick part of who I am. I'm black, but I'm also deaf. You know, I'm a lot more than that. So, with inclusion, so it means like everything is included. But with accessibility, it's about the specific, you know, you're making it accessible for this specific disability. So that's just a difference between those. And then what you learned here is that Accessibility design and inclusion design applies to everything. It applies to this, it applies to this, it applies to this, this, even this. So it applies to the environment like this. So if we turn off all the light, and it's one of you is talking to me, even if she's yours, she's signing, I have no idea what you guys are saying because I rely on visual communication. So if you're hosting a conference, you have to make sure you leave a seat for that person you know, in front. You have to make sure that the light, you know, is enough, it's not too bright, you know, it has to be perfect. So you have to think about all these things. And if you're saying we're promoting, we are um, being accessible. So accessibility is something that you should have from the start. It's not something that you should have at the end. Accommodation is something that you add on when someone requests it. You make adjustments to it. So that's just a little bit different about it. Is. Um, so I'm going to let Rose going to be talking about digital accessibility. <laughs> All right. So some of you heard me speak when we were doing a little breakout session. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about digital accessibility. And you may have heard me say this, that it's considered as the ramps and rails of the digital world. So when you're thinking about all different types of online content, not just your website, mobile apps, social media posts, videos, podcasts, documents, and more, almost every single type of public facing content that you're building, designing, and utilizing needs to be as accessible as possible. Why does this matter? There is 26%, depending on the stats that you look at, of the US population that have some form of disability. 
there's 1.4 people in Missouri alone and 1 billion people worldwide that have these different four main categories of disability, visual, auditory, motor, and cognitive. Even under these main categories, we have a whole bunch of subcategories. Blindness, low vision, color blindness, difficulty in using your hands with motor functions, learning disabilities, attention deficit disorders, problem solving and logic, all of these different things can be classified as a different type of disability. But when we're thinking about disabilities, oftentimes the first thing that people will think about is someone that is blind or someone that is deaf or someone that's in a wheelchair. But when we're thinking about this image right here is from the Microsoft Inclusive Design Toolkit, there's different categories of these disabilities as well. Permanent, temporary, and situational. If we're looking at the touch, for example, someone that has a permanent disability might be an amputee and only have one arm. A temporary disability is someone broke their arm, so they only have use of one of their arms. But a situational one is a, new, a, new par a parent holding a newborn. That is a situational disability where they are unable to use that particular arm at this point in time. So you're able to see this for all of these different types of categories from sight, vision, hearing, and auditory. These different types of disabilities, you wanna make things work for everyone regardless of these types of abilities and situations. You also wanna think about the graying globe. People are getting older and they're also actively using technology. My dad, someone who considers himself to not have a disability, still zooms in the phone to 400% to properly access something. So when we're thinking about this, the number of people worldwide aged 80 and over are going to quadruple to $400 million, 400 million people. And 20% 20, 20 of the US population will be over 65 by 2030. As you see on the slide, 42% of adults are owning smartphones, up from just 18% in 2013. So not only are we thinking about these ends of the spectrum for different types of disabilities, we're also thinking about the graying globe and people that are getting older and actively using technology as well. This is just a quick chart, I know it's very blurry, of the disability prevalence by age that just reinforces this point. The older you get, the more types of acquired disabilities that you may be experiencing uh, throughout your entire life. So when we look at common accessibility errors, I know we've talked about it extensively, what are some of these different things that you wanna be thinking about? The first thing is proper alternative text. So we just did this inclusive example right here of an image that does not have alternative text, you just uploaded the file name. That is what a screen reader, what we are looking at at my station, is going to announce to someone. Whereas if you put proper alternative text, it's probably going to give you the context of that image. Similar thing with color contrast, another thing that visually affects the front end design of a site. Something that it's very difficult to read the contrast that's on the right hand side of the screen versus giving good contrast with that darker green. So when you're thinking about these basic accessibility considerations, think about proper color combinations as well as adding proper alternative text to your images. Some back end accessibility considerations as well include things like skip links for screen readers. So someone that's using a screen reader is going to be using the tab, enter, space bar, and arrow keys to navigate through. Imagine every single time you went to a web page, let's say ESPN, you had to tab through every single menu element before you could actually get to the main point of your content. It would get very cumbersome, very tiring, very annoying. So what people should be doing from an accessibility consideration is include this skip link that's hidden, but for screen readers, when it is pressed, it actually skips over the header and you're actually able to get to the main point of your content. So the skip nav takes the users directly to that specific content on their page. Another backend accessibility consideration is things like form labels. There's different types of designs that you see on the screen here, both prompting you to enter your email address as well as a password. These two might look the same. So visually, you see enter email and password, but programmatically, these don't properly provide a label or an explanation to someone that's using assistive technologies. It's just going to say form field, form field. So if you provide a proper label, as the example shows above, email address, password, it'll announce it to a screen reader as this is a form field. Just some things to think about that a sighted user might not be thinking about, but someone who is non-sighted definitely 
is thinking about. So we've talked about all of these things from a technical perspective and an inclusivity perspective, but this also is a legal requirement. Under the Americans with Disabilities Act, Section 508 for Government and Education Institutions, and the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, almost all public and consumer-facing businesses need to have an accessible website. However, there was an incredible study done. They tested the top one million websites. 98.1% of websites failed basic accessibility testing, which has resulted in a 400% increase in accessibility-related lawsuits in just the past two years. So this is something that we need to think about as well from a compliance-based perspective. But when you make things compliant, compliance creates opportunity. Because accessibility improves the experience in unexpected ways. Its sibling is the search and optimization industry. You can rank higher in Google by making your digital assets accessible. For certain businesses, you also can get 50% of your investment back in tax credits. And it also is accessibility equals access to more customers where there was a study done that 82% of customers with accessibility needs would actually spend more on a website that is accessible. I believe it's over $460 billion of spending power in the disabled market with friends and family. So what do we really need in a true accessibility offer? You need to be able to test and identify these accessibility issues from an automated, manual, and functional testing perspective. You need to properly report these things because oftentimes this is the first you're hearing about it. How can you properly understand and categorize these issues? Then you want to actually make these changes at the source code level. We've had a couple of great questions about AI, and AI unfortunately is not sophisticated enough to be able to make these changes yet. So you want to be able to train your developers as well on understanding these accessibility considerations to make sure that you're maintaining accessibility for the long term. And that's something that my agency, Nebula Media Group, offers at a SAS Plus service subscription, if you're interested in learning more. <laughs> but that was everything that we had today. I uh, just want to thank you again for your time and participation today and your interest in making the world more inclusive and accessible to all. So feel free to ask any questions. Thanks again. <laughs>